Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pete Siebert, and I'm the director of the Buffalo Bill Center of the West, located here in beautiful downtown Cody, Wyoming. So glad to uh, spend a little time with you talking about a subject that's near and dear to my heart. I think many of you, especially in these days when we can't get out, are digging around the house, looking at things, and deciding what to do about things that perhaps we've inherited. And one of the biggest topics are inherited family photographs. These are images that we may have been given over the years, often by relatives who are now passed away, and we have absolutely no idea who's in the subject. That's really tough, and I remember working many years ago in a museum where we had buckets and boxes and scads of these images and no way to ever identify them. And often we would let them be used for educational programming or give them away because we'd never ever be able to figure out who the subjects were. So as you start to dig around, I think one of the first things to think about when you look at these old photographs is how old are they? Because there are certain clues that you can learn in terms of size and how they're put together that might help you at least in deciding if it's your grandfather or your great-grandfather or your cousin Joe. So the first image that I want to show you is this one. And it's a small image. It's called a carte de visite, a CDV and CDVs were popular during the Civil War. You could see this is a Civil War non-commissioned officer. We turn it around, it has a stamp on the back for the photographer. This one was from New Haven, Connecticut. Now these are great when you see these because they'll often include that the photograph was taken around the Civil War. They were very inexpensive compared to earlier photographs and they're a pretty good clue as to the age of, of the subject. Moving on through history, our next one is the cabinet card. The cabinet card is from the 1880s, and this is an image fairly typical of that period. You can see it's much, much bigger than the CDV. It is, these were produced often in multiple, so you may see several copies of the same image, and that was great in families because they could have spread them around. It's also marked on the back with the name of a photographer, in this case one from New Haven, Connecticut as well. A little bit later than that, around 1900-1910, you have an image like this. And you can see this image is in fact a little bit bigger than the CD or the cabinet card, and certainly bigger than the CDV. It's on a gray stock with the name of the photographer down here in front. And these were very, very common around 1900-1910, and you can usually pick them up for the white border and the dark gray surrounding it. This was also that period in 1910 when you had images like this one where um, you could show different outdoor scenery. So these were taken out of doors um, much more commonly than in studios in some cases. Here you have that same charcoal gray mat, the white border. Um, and these are, you often find these with pictures of family reunions, families in front of houses and so on and so forth. These probably again date from around 1900 and 1910. By the 1920s, you have your first real photographs like we think of today. Images that are printed on large sheets of photographic paper, black and white at first, but I will say that black and white is not the only medium that you'll find. This is a color photograph dated 1928. It is of a group of tall cedars of Lebanon, that's a Masonic group, at their parade in Atlantic City, New Jersey. But you can certainly see this early color photography. And then finally, the image that most of us are familiar with, and that is the little, turn it right side up, is the little uh, snapshot. And these can be very small, they can be bigger than this. Uh, this one dates from World War II, and if you notice, it has a little bit of a serrated or rough edge to it. And that's common for photography of this period. So with these photographs, they can give you some clues as to when they date from. Outside of that, what I always look at is to see where the photographer was from. Because if the photographer was from your same hometown, that's a good clue that it might be a particular relative. If it's from some distant place, then this could be the red herring of simply a photograph of a family friend that got sent along to somebody. So always check those back stamps. Now there are a little bit of warning about that. During the Civil War, photographers would take pictures of young soldiers as they left for the fight in the Civil War, but then there were also photographers who were in various places where the men camped and traveling photographers who followed along with them. So it's not always a guarantee that you're going to have an image 
uh, from the Civil War period that was taken in their hometown. I always recommend that folks copy their images. These are very fragile. Having good copies made, share the copies, post them on Ancestry, do all the things that you would want to do to preserve them. I also really encourage people to get some of these polypropylene sheets. These are protectors. This one is probably for baseball cards. You can get them a little bit larger and slip those photographs inside. Why? Because the images often will abrade against each other and scratch and that will shorten the lifespan of the image. So go on home, do a little digging around, talk to your aunt and your cousin and so forth. Try and figure out who these people are. And then your final step is to actually write on the back of the image who you think it is. Now don't use a pen, don't use a flare, don't use a sharpie, don't use a crayon. Use a soft pencil. Soft pencil to write on there, Joe Smith, and then a question mark is always fine to add so that if you don't really know for sure who it is, you can at least make some deductions about it and maybe a future generation can figure it out. But at this point, the further you get down through history, the less likely it is that people will ever figure out who made these images. So spend some time if you're caught up in the next couple of weeks, no place to go, trace down those family photographs, figure out who they might be and, and take care of them and pass them on to the next generation. Just a moment from the Buffalo Bill Center of the West.